Good evening, everyone. Today, I'm going to share on the concepts in alkenes. So these are the learning outcomes. And we are going to talk about the physical properties of alkenes, how to prepare alkenes, and the various chemical properties of alkenes, and how do you distinguish alkenes from other hydrocarbons. Now, alkenes form a homologous series of unsaturated aliphatic Aliphatic means we are talking about open chains and not uh, ring structure, hydrocarbons, with the general formula CnH2n, where n is an integer greater than or equals to 2. The carbon-carbon double bond is the distinguishing structural feature of an alkene. Ethene, CH2, CH2 is the first member of the alkene family. Each carbon atom in an ethene molecule is sp2 hybridized, meaning two of the three sp2 hybrid orbitals of the carbon atom will overlap head on with the 1s orbitals of two hydrogen atoms to form two CH sigma bonds. The remaining sp2 hybrid orbital will overlap head on with the sp2 hybrid orbitals of the neighboring carbon atom to form a CC sigma bond. The unhybridized 2p orbital, which is perpendicular to the plane containing the atoms, will overlap side on with the 2p orbital of the neighboring carbon atom to form a pi bond. The pi electron cloud lies above and below the plane containing the atoms. Okay, so in sp2 hybridized orbitals, okay, uh, the 1s orbital is the hydrogen atom that will um overlap with the carbon okay to form the sigma bond okay so there is one more 2p orbital that is not hybridized will be the uh, pi bond sp2 means there are three um, orbitals involved and they form a hybrid orbital sp2 okay and also um we notice that the but around the carbon central is trigonal planar that is the shape of the molecule so this is how the bonding and ethene molecule looks like so carbon to hydrogen we see a sp2 hybrid orbitals okay sp2 sp2 then between c and c we have a sigma bond okay um and above it will be the unhybridized 2p orbital okay <clears throat> so we have the 1s and the 2p orbitals overlapping. So out of this sp2 hybridized, right, there are three ma. One of it is here, one of it is here, the other is between C and C. All right. There are three regions of electron density around each carbon atom in the ethene molecule. So to minimize electronic repulsion, these three regions of electron density will adopt a trigonal planar geometry such that the angle okay, between the bond pair will be 120 degrees. As observed from the bond energy and bond length between ethane and ethene, more energy is required to break the double bond. CC double bond is stronger. However, the energy to break a double bond is actually less than twice the energy to break the single bond. That is because the pi bond is weaker than the sigma bond. Side on overlap of orbitals will always be less effective than his on overlap of orbitals. The CC double bond in ethene molecule is actually shorter because the two carbon atoms in the ethene 
are brought closer together upon the formation of the pi bond via the side-on overlap of the two unhybridized 2p orbitals. For alkene, the suffix end with ene, -E. the longest continuous carbon chain bearing the carbon-carbon double bond will determine the root. Where necessary, the posh position of the C double bond is specified by the placing the appropriate number between the root and the suffix. Now, for example, the double bond is between the second and third carbon. We call this built two in. If the double bond is between the first and second carbon, you can either call it built in or built one in. Okay? Now, these are just exercise for you to check at your own time how to do it. Okay? I shall not take time to elaborate on this. Compounds with two CC double bond are named as dienes by changing the ANE ending of the parent alkane to the suffix ADIEN. For example, butane-1,3-diene. The rotation of the carbon-carbon double bond is restricted because it will require the pi bond to be broken. At room temperature, there's insufficient energy to break the pi bond. If each doubly bonded carbon atom of the aliphatic alkene is joined to two different groups, the hindered rotation of the CC double bond gives rise to cis trans isomerism. Note, the trigonal planar geometry around each carbon in the CC double bond needs to be clearly shown when drawing the structure of cis and trans isomers. The structures are incorrect when you are asked to draw the structure of cis trans isomers because you are not showing the correct structure. You have to show the orientation correctly. There is no cis trans isomerism in this case because each doubly bonded carbon atom have two identical groups joined to it. You must have different identical groups joined to that carbon. Cyclohexene only exists in the cis configuration with the H atoms on both on the same side of the CC double bond. There is no trans isomer present because of the high ring strain. The H atoms of the double bond in cyclohexene must be on the same side so that the cyclohexene can only exist in a cis form. So there's no cis trans isomerism in cyclohexene. So for cycloalkene to have trans configuration, the cycloalkene needs to have eight or more carbon atoms. So cyclopentene, cyclobutene, cyclopentene, cyclohexene, and heptene do not exist cis trans isomerism because only the cis form exists because if there is a trans form, it will not be stable due to the high ring strain. In the case of cyclooctane, the number of carbon in the ring is sufficiently large to ensure no ring strain or little ring strain rather. Cis isomer in general are less stable than trans isomer because of the uh, high steric stress experience in the cis isomer. Metal group in cis isomer are closer together. Therefore, there will be repulsion between the closer CH3 group, which results in greater steric strain. The difference in stability is quantified by comparing the enthalpy change of combustion. So for trans isomer, the enthalpy change of combustion is 2,682. For cis isomers, we have the enthalpy change of combustion negative 2,686 kilojoule per mole. So the trans isomer releases less energy, which means it is of a lower energy. Therefore, the trans isomer is more stable.
okay, the greater the value of the enthalpy change of combustion, the more unstable it is because you need to release um, more energy in order to stabilize it. The trend of physical properties of alkene is similar to alkenes. Alkenes are insoluble in water, but soluble in non-polar solvent. With the increase in number of carbon atoms, the boiling point increases. However, there are some differences in the physical property between the cis and trans isomers. Let's take a look at it. For the cis isomer, there is no net dipole moment of very small. In a trans isomerism, sorry, for the cis isomer, cis built two in, there is a small net dipole moment. Okay? But for the trans, is zero because the dipole cancel off each other. If you look at the melting point between the cis and trans isomers, the cis butuene is slightly polar while trans is non-polar. Cis and trans both form weak ID-ID interactions. However, for cis isomer, there is some additional PD-PD interaction, which means more energy to overcome, which explains the higher boiling point. But in the case of melting point, we have the cis isomer having a lower melting point. That is because the molecules of trans pack better in a crystal lattice, which means when they are packed closer together, there is stronger intermolecular forces or stronger uh, ID-ID interactions between the molecules. So, which means more energy to overcome, the trans isomer will have a higher melting point. So in the case of the cis isomer, the CH3 methyl group, okay, are so close to each other, there will be repulsion, which causes packing to be less efficient. So if you have a structure that allows um, okay. It looks something like this. So what happened is that you can actually pack better or pack them more closely together. In this way. So this is for the trans. For the cis. Hmm. It's more difficult to pack them closely because uh, of repulsion between the metal groups. Okay. So if you look at the diagram, the trans isomer actually take up less space and they can be closer to each other. For the cis isomer, they cannot be too close. They have repulsion. So the intermolecular force is weaker, explaining the lower melting point. Now, this is a simple exercise. Take a look at it. You are supposed to arrange the alkenes in decreasing order of boiling point. Okay, you can pause the video to try out the questions before we run through the answers. So the highest melting boiling point will be the cis pen 2 in. Okay, because there is some PDPD interactions followed by the trans pen 2 in. And we have the two metal B1 in having the lowest boiling point because this is more branched than the other two. Okay, they are all isomers of each other, but the branch alkene have a smaller surface area for intermolecular interaction. So the ID ID interactions is weaker, hence requiring less energy to overcome explaining the lowest melting point among the three. As explained earlier, cis isomer has slight dipole moment and additional PDPD interactions, which 
result in stronger interactions compared to the trunks. To prepare alkene, we can use elimination method. The detail of this elimination method is explained in the video on uh, alcohol, where we talk about elimination reactions, where we can actually, oh, halogenol alkene or alcohol. Okay, either one of it. So in both videos on halogenol alkanes as well as alcohol, we talk about how we can use um, <clears throat> elimination method using the required reagents and conditions to form back the alkene. Okay, so using sodium hydroxide in alcohol and heat under reflux, alkene can be produced. And alcohol can also be uh, eliminated, okay, to form alkene using excess concentrated sulfuric acid at 170 degrees. Now, so this is how it can be done. Let's start with the halogenol alkane. So this is the reagent and condition. Make sure you remember, all right? The sodium hydroxide has to be in alcohol solvent or ethanol. You can use either potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. So what happened is that the hydrogen atom and the halogen atom from the adjacent carbon atoms on the halogenol alkane will be eliminated as a molecule of hydrogen halide. And the double bond between the carbon is formed. Two points to take note. In this reaction, the OH- minus act as a base in the elimination reaction. It's actually acting as a Lewis base that extracts okay, a H plus from C adjacent to C, and there will be a formation of the pi bond between the two carbon atoms, all right? So the OH minus, right, acting as a base, will first attack the H atom on the halogenol alkane. So it will remove H because H is not so electronegative, okay? So for a for a base, the double, the lone pair of electrons of O is able to extract the H out. Because H is less electronegative, it's able to be removed more easily. So when this is removed, the bond between CH is broken. And this, and then this electron go back to carbon, which form a double bond between the adjacent carbon. And when this is formed, the carbon need to take the electron it has with bromine to form the double bond with the adjacent carbon. And because Br is kind of electronegative, so this is electronegative, it can be a good living group. So the Br can safely leave and form uh, and leave the halogenol alkane. Okay, and therefore the double bond will be formed. Okay, so the OH minus remove the H from water is acting as a base because it remove H. It is a uh, accepting proton. So it's a base because the OH minus accept proton. Proton acceptor is a base. Okay, just a recap on what you learn under SCM basis. We can also look at it as a Lewis base because it is a electron pair donor. Okay, we can also classify it as a base from this perspective. So Br is, uh, the bond between C Br is broken and Br gained the electron from C, from this bond. So the gain by the electron is Br minus, okay? You gain by the electron, extra electrons. Now, what is reflux? Okay, let's go through the concepts of reflux. Reflux is the process of heating a reaction mixture 
while continuously cooling the vapor via the condenser with running water. On heating, the volatile reagents or reactant products vaporize. The vapor form condensers when cooled and return back to the flask as a liquid. The loss of volatile reactants or product is minimized. So what happened is that um, while the reaction mixture is heated, okay, the volatile reactant products will vaporize. The vapor form condense and cool go back to the flask. So there will be a continuous process of heating and cooling with the help of the condenser. Okay, so you are trying to reduce the loss of volatile reactants and products by having this uh, process of allowing to allowing the vapor form to condense and return back to the round bottom flask. And in organic synthesis, we often use reflux involving heating a reaction mixture that contain volatile reactants and products for an extended period of time. And the temperature of this reaction can actually be controlled or maintained using a water bath. Since we are using a water bath, we can only go up to 100 degrees Celsius or less. Okay, but if we use a heating metal, we can actually go beyond 100 degrees Celsius. So we will adjust accordingly. All right. <clears throat> Now, let's look at the second method where we eliminate water from alcohol. We call it dehydration of alcohol. The conditions and the reagents used are excess concentrated sulfuric acid. Concentrated sulfuric acid is a good dehydrating agent. Of course, you can use other dehydrating agent, but this concentrated sulfuric acid allows the dehydration process to be carried out at the lowest temperature possible. Other dehydrating agents can also work, but you need to adjust to a higher temperature, which is more energy consuming. So it's advisable to use a reagent that allows the lowest possible temperature. Okay, We want to minimize heating as much as possible. So just now we are eliminating from a halogenol alkane. Now we are removing from alcohol. Now, the hydrogen atom and the hydroxyl group OH from adjacent carbon atoms on an alcohol molecule are eliminated as a molecule of water. So we have two possible products form, major product as well as the minor. So which is major, which is minor, it really depends on what is it on it. Okay, now, it has something to do with the, the next part I'm going to go through with you. Why is this major and why is this minor? All right. <clears throat> mm. Okay. Now, we call it the Zeissif rules. If there is a possibility of forming more than more, more than one alkene, the more stable alkene is the major product. The alkene with more alkyne substituents is in generally more stable. And this is the order of stability of alkenes that increase in this order. So we have um, these alkenes being the most unsubstituted will be the least stable. Okay, with more alkyne groups the stability increases, okay? All right. So the most stable is the one with the greatest number of substituents. That is why. But we need to consider what happened. Now, so consider 
a reaction between butane 2 nor and excess concentrated sulfuric acid at 170 degrees Celsius. These are the products formed in the elimination reaction. So built one in is the minor product and built two in is the major product. Okay. So in this case, built two in, there will also be cis-trump isomers. All right. Now let's look at this example. Don't look at the answer yet. What will be the structural formula of the organic products for the reaction? So with KOH in ethanol, heat under reflux. Okay. The major product will be the one with three alkyne substituent. This will be the minor. All right. So where will you remove the heat from here or from here? Of course, from here because more substituent. Now, how about this? What are the structural formula of all alkenes formed when pentane 2 nor is heated with excess concentrated sulfuric acid? Okay. Uh, so this is pentane 2 nor And then these are the possible products form, including the sterile isomer. So you need to indicate both the cis and trans isomer as well. Don't forget that. Okay, cis and trans isomers. So you could have pen 1 in or pen 2 in. Okay, because they say of all, so both major and minor have to be included. Mm, which I think that these two will be the major one because you have more substituents. Now, we will talk about why the one with more substitute won't be more stable. It's related to the next part, okay? But the for elimination, we do not need to know yet. So let's look at the chemical properties of alkenes. In general, they are non-polar, all right? Um, their reactivity is considered high because of the high electron density of the carbon-carbon double bond, which is the pi electron cloud which lies above and below the plane. They are known to attract reagents such as electrophiles. So electrophiles are electrons hungry. They are thirsty for electron. So electrophile being electron pair acceptor, electron deficient, they will be attracted to regions of negative charges or regions of electron rich sites. Because electrophile itself possesses empty orbitals to accept electron pair. So the CC double bond consists of a sigma as well as a pi bond. And the reactions of alkene involve the breaking of the weaker pi bond. As we know, the overlapping orbitals is less effective. So it's easier to break. So when we have this, um, molecule, we have to break the sigma bond and then it will form new two new sigma bonds. So alkenes undergo electrophilic addition reactions. Okay. Now, so what are the reactions we are going to focus on is addition of halogen, addition of hydrogen halide, and addition of water to form alcohol. So this is a starting reagent, our dearest alkene. It can be, it can undergo addition reaction to form this, or it can undergo um, addition reaction with water with suitable conditions to form alcohol. And with Br2 in CCL4 in the dark, because you want to prevent a uh, free radical substitution, we only want to focus on um, brumination, then it will be this. And in aqueous reagent, we actually have the OH. That should be the correct answer. What you learn at O level, where they say you form BRBR, -BR, that is not correct. Okay? Not say not correct, but incomplete. There is still BRBR -BR form, but it's a minor product. This is the major one. Okay? Now, 
the electrophilic addition of X2, which call it halogenation of alkenes, will be carried out at room temperature in the absence of sunlight. So we will dissolve the X2 in the inert solvent, which is CCL4, the more common solvent. All right, no need high temperature, room temperature will be fine in the dark. The reaction of alkene with fluorine is not recommended to be carried out because it's highly explosive and iodine too slow. So we only focus on chlorine and bromine, which, will, which we can carry out successfully in the lab. So ethene reacts with bromine at room temperature to form 1,2-dibromoethane. And the observation will be the orange-red bromine is decolorized. Take note, we no longer call it reddish-brown, we call it orange-red because in the inert solvent, the bromine appear orange-red. So when it reacts with the alkene, it will be decolorized to form a 1,2-dibromoethane. So this is a very useful test to check for unsaturation. Now, let's go through the points to take note when you describe mechanism. First of all, you will be asked to name. So for example, we are going to talk about electrophilic addition. Secondly, we show the movement of electrons using curved arrow. Please remember that. So electrons will flow from electron reach or electron donor to electron acceptor or electron deficient region. And we have to show the lone pair of electrons on the nucleophile and indicate partial charges, indicate slow or fast step for each elementary step. Draw the formula of any intermediate and draw the formula of the product, identifying both the major and the minor products. Okay. So this is the mechanism. Step one. When the bromine molecule approaches the ethene molecule, the pi electron cloud will interact with the approaching bromine. And this will cause the BrBr -Br bond to be polarized. Polarized means that now the electron distribution will become uneven because the negative, negative charge electron cloud, okay, or should I say electron rich, will attract, okay, will, sorry, will repel the electrons to the right, okay? So the left side will be partial positive. That is called polarized because by right, the electrons in BRPR are quite evenly spread out. But because of the approaching ethene molecule with the pi electron cloud, it will cause BRPR bond to become polarized. Next, you indicate with the full headed arrow to represent the flow of two electrons from the electron rich double double bond to the electrophile. Okay, so the BR plus here is the electrophile. Always remember to draw the arrow from electron rich towards the electron division. Full arrow because involve two electrons. All right. And remember when you do this, this bond will be affected. Okay, because it will be broken as a result. When the electron flow from the pi electron cloud, so what happens is that the electron actually flow to this side. Okay, what happens next is that the electron density will be shifted towards the partial negative BR atom. And this result in heteroglytic fission, meaning uh, it's a fission process where the electrons shed in the covalent bond will both go to the more electronegative atom or to the partial negative uh, charge atom. So you form a BR minus as a result. So this BR go to this side already. Okay, so it attract this and this uh, pi bond is broken. Yes, the pi bond is broken and the electron in the pi bond are now shed between the carbon and the bromine. Okay, the adjacent carbon atom lose an electron, of course. It will lose because the electron go to the other side, ma, to the BRBR. Ma. So this particular carbon that's adjacent to that will become a carbocation because it loses electron. Okay, and we can see the um the new the intermediate carbocation shape, sp3 and sp2. Okay. Recall a carbocation is an ion with a positive charged carbon atom. It is extremely reactive which has a strong tendency to gain because it's hungry for electrons. So it will snatch electron that's available. So in the first step, huh, 
we call it a slow or rate determining step. The heterolytic fission of the BRBRA bond occurs and the pi bond of the eating molecule cleave. So this is relatively slow, okay? The first step will be the nucleophilic attack of the BR minus. So we move on to step two. So remember the BR, remember you need to indicate the lone pair of electron. So this is actually a uh, nucleophile, okay? Nucleophile is thirsty for nucleus, positive charge. So the negative charge bromide ion being a nucleophile will start to share the lone pair of electron with the carbocation intermediate to form the product. Okay. So in this case, um, there is no major or minor here because we do not have a metal group. Okay. Which will affect it. Later we talk about that. Now, <clears throat> so let's try this question. Describe the mechanism for reaction between cyclohexene and Br2 in CCL4 in the dark. So write down the name of the mechanism, which is called electrophilic addition. Describe mechanism means you don't have to write in words. You just draw out, okay? Showing the correct flow of electrons and the curve arrow. You must indicate partial positive, partial negative, and you must say slow or fast, okay? You must, okay? So this one is cyclohexene. It will remember from here, attract this one. This one bond back to this one. You form BR mass. Show this one. This is important. And then from here, attack the carbocation ion, which is the first step to form the BR. Okay. Now let's look at the next mechanism. Electrophilic addition of HX. Hydrohalogenation of alkenes. Okay, this is carried out at room temperature. This time around, we have, have iodine there. Now, ethene reacts with hydrogen bromide at room temperature to form bromoethene. Okay, let's look at the stability of the carbocation ion. The carbocation ion is an ion with a positive charged carbon atom. It is considered a Lewis acid um, because it accepts electron pair. So let's revise. Lewis acid accepts electron pair because it's hungry for electron. Now, we have the metal cation, the primary, secondary. So primary means it's bonded to two hydrogen. Here, one hydrogen is secondary, no hydrogen tertiary. All right. The stability of the charge system is increased by the dispersal of the charge. So any factor that leads to the spreading out of the positive charge of the electron division carbon over the rest of the ion will stabilize the carbocation ion. Consider the substituent G, which is bonded to the electron division carbon. Okay, let's look at this G. Compared to the hydrogen atom, G can be either electron donating or electron withdrawing. Electron donating substituent G means that it will lead to the dispersal of the positive charge. Okay, so the direction is towards the carbon. And when it can donate electrons, it will stabilize the carbocation ion. Okay, because it allows the positive charge to be dispersed. Okay. But if you have an electron withdrawing substituent, it will intensify the positive charge and will destabilize the carbocation ion. Okay, let's examine it closely. An alkyl group is electron donating. So in a CH3 group, carbon is actually slightly more electronegative. So what happens is that the carbon atom itself will attract the electron density of the shared electron towards itself. So carbon acquire a partial negative charge and hydrogen acquire a partial positive charge. The carbon atom can donate the increased electron density via sigma bond through this effect called inductive effect. Because of the high electron density, it can actually uh, donate, <laughs> donate, okay, through the 
sigma bond here, okay, to stabilize this carbon cation, okay. <clears throat> so with more alkyne groups, the more stable the carbon cation. So the tertiary carbon cation is the most stable. Okay, we're going to talk about Makonikov rule. When a symmetrical alkene undergoes electrophilic addition, the more stable carbon cation intermediate is formed. The more stable carbon cation is formed by the addition of electrophile to the less substituted carbon of the CC double bond. That is the carbon containing more hydrogen. The orientation of the addition is determined by considering the relative stabilities of the carbon cation intermediate. So the more stable the carbon cation, the faster it is formed. So the stability of carbon ions correspond to the rate of formation of the carbon ions. So let's try this exercise. Read this question before we start going through the answer. Okay, try to do it yourself. See whether your answer matches this, okay? Now, when you have two metal built two in reacts with dry gaseous HBr, we form two products. So write a mechanism to explain why the two products are formed. Must make sure you write down the name of the mechanism and then you start to draw the mechanism. Write a title, addition of electrophile to the pi bond. So this one attract this, this one this. So the slow step will be this. So you form a carbocation over here. Okay. Because you actually gain the... Uh, the extra, uh, the hydrogen goes through here. Yeah, this one. You can see that? Yeah, then this one, the, the carbocation will be the more... Either this or this, correct? But I think it'll be here, more likely the major product because this is, uh, the carbon carbocation is a tertiary one. So this is actually more stable because you have more electron donating groups to stabilize by dispersing the positive charge. And then, there will be a nucleophilic attack. So we're looking at the minor product first, and then you form the minor product. As for the more stable one, you form this, okay? Now, two points to take note. <clears throat> when two metal built two in reacts with HBr, the H atom binds bonds to the less substituted carbon atom to form the more stable tertiary carbon cation. Since the tertiary carbon cation is more stable, it's formed faster than the secondary carbon cation. So the 2-bromo-2-methyl butane is formed faster than 2-bromo-3-methyl butane. Therefore, the formal is the major product of the addition reaction, which is consistent with Makonikov rule. There's another way to present the mechanism, all right, by looking at this, you can just write in this manner, everything in sequential order in a line. That is fine. But you have to show both the minor and the major la, products. All right. Okay, this is the minor. This is the major. Okay, so this is formed faster. Then you have a higher proportion of it. It can be seen from the above example that when an electrophile such as um, H plus adds to one carbon atom of the C-C double bond alkene, the other C atom acquires a positive charge. So if the C atoms in the C-C double bond are attached to different number of H atoms, a more stable carbocation is formed if the electrophile adds to the C with more H atom as shown. So the H will add to the... Okay. You have this, let's say you have this a symmetrical alkene, meaning you have one R here. So that makes it a symmetrical, not the H here, but it changed it to R. So if you add the H plus to C with less H, 
less H is here, this one. Then you will form the primary carbocation ion, which is less stable and form less quickly. If the H plus added to the one with, to the C with more H, then the, as a result, the secondary carbocation ion is formed, which is more stable. One quick way to predict the major product okay, to a, a symmetrical alkene is to use a Markovnikov rule, which states that for addition of hydrogen halide to alkenes, H plus from HX adds to the C okay, with the larger number of H atoms. That's a general rule. Hence, the major product of electrophilic addition of HS to a symmetrical alkene is the one formed by the addition of H plus to C with the more H atoms attached. The reason behind Markovnikov rule is because the more stable carbocation is formed if H plus from HX adds to the C with more hydrogen atoms. Now, let's try this exercise before looking at the answer. What will be the major and minor product? Okay, both have to be mentioned. So uh, the major one, of course, is the one, uh, the H bonded to the one with more hydrogen, bonded to the C with more hydrogen atoms bonded to it. The minor will be the other one. Same here, the H bonded to the one here. That means Br is here. All right. Major, the minor one will be the other way around. Okay, <clears throat> next, X2 aqueous. So what will happen? Okay, this is a bit different. We have aqueous. So there's also water involved. So there will be OH here. See, this is to the, you can see that this is to the, to the uh, secondary carbocation, major product. Can also have this as the minor product, and this is also minor. So at O level, you only write this, which is not the full picture. Not wrong, but not the full picture. And the orange aqueous bromine is decolorized. Okay, it's still decolorized. So to explain the formation of all the products, let me go through. Now in step one, the there's electrophilic addition of the electrophile, this one to the pi bond. So this attack pull away. So um, this is the more stable carbocation ion. So the, the Br, okay, is, hmm, is attached to the C with the more hydrogen atoms, Markovnikov rule. The other Br, less stable, lah, that you form the primary carbocation ion. And then in the second step, the nucleophilic attack will actually involve mostly the, actually it's the OH minus. Lah. Yeah. So the OH minus will attack the carbocation ion, but sometimes the BR minus will also form. Okay. In the, for the less stable primary carbocation ion, you have OH here, and these two are the same product. Now, let's go through the detailed mechanism for the formation of that major product. Uh, one bromopropane to nor. Okay. How is it formed? So um, as usual, write your name of mechanism and then draw the mechanism, but indicate this step first. Electrophilic addition of electrophile Br positive to the pi bond. Okay. And then the Br added to the C, this is more stable with more hydrogen atoms, Markovnikov rule. And then the Br minus heterolytic fission. And then the slow one. So must also mention the minor product as well. Don't forget that. So the pi electron cloud of the alkene interacts with the Br2 molecule and cause the Br-Br bond to be polarized. So they ask you to describe in words, this is how you write it. The Br Br bond cleave heterolytically, you form two carbocation intermediate. Okay, two carbocation intermediate. The secondary carbocation is more stable down here, will be formed faster. And then we follow up with the nucleophilic attack of water. Remember to indicate the lone pair. 
Water is the solvent and is present in great excess. So the water molecule will compete with Br- and normally will win to attack the carbocation intermediate. So the oxygen atom of the water shares an electron pair with the carbocation to form an ox oxonion, 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 ox oxonion ion, which means the oxygen atom bearing the positive charge. You will form this first, OH, H2O, okay? Because it share, then it lack of one, all right? You share both black. Then the reaction of the less stable primary carbocation ion, not the formation, and the formation of the CH3, CHBr, CH2Br from Br minus attacking carbocation ion element are not shown here. You don't need to show that, just, yeah. And then after which, the oxonian ion loses the H plus ion to form a bromohydrin. So the H2O take away the H, this one break, go back to the O, and you form an OH. So this is the full mechanism. So the H2O molecule share a lone pair with the H plus to form the H3O plus ion, hydronian ion. Okay, try this at own time. <coughs> Propene and bromine in concentrated aqueous sodium chloride. Okay, so in this case, right, you will have the nucleophile write down better, H2O, Br minus, and Cl minus. Okay, there's no need to describe, just draw and see what are the possible products. So let's start with this one. So the carbocation form, mm, propene, right? Yeah, so this is the, okay. The Br will add up with the one more H will be here. And then if it is Cl minus, then it could be here. So this is the starting one. Uh. So you add Br2, this one. Br minus come out, you can form this. With Br minus, because you have log, then you have this. Okay. Then, this considered minor. The major one is here. So the major is here. Okay, you have the OH. Of course, minus H plus means, um, yeah, you have this H2O plus, the oxygen ion will lose the H plus ion. Ma. So you give out a H plus. Let's move on to formation of alcohol from alkenes. So you can actually synthesize ethanol from alkene in two ways. Number one, you can use cold concentrated sulfuric acid followed by water and warm. Okay, so water itself cannot be a profile. It requires the help of sulfuric acid, actually. Yeah. Now, this is also electrophilic addition. So what happened is that the ethene will react first with the cold concentrated sulfuric acid to form ethyl hydrogen sulfate. So you will form, um, this one come out, O, SO3H, so it's here. Okay. So the electron flow from the pi electron cloud to the electrophile H here, partial positive H. And as a result, the OH bond is cleaved heterotically. Okay. And then you form this one. That is the first step. So the H form here, and then followed by this one. Okay, we'll form a carbocat ion first, but we didn't, didn't show the step here. Then there will be hydrolysis. So when this ethyl hydrogen sulfate is warmed with water, ethanol is formed. So this came out replaced with OH and the sulfuric acid is regenerated. Okay, there's no need to show the full mechanism. This is a hydrolysis reaction where you use water to break the bond okay, and join, and join the OH. And the H come out to form back the H2SO4. So, so this is like a catalyst because it's regenerated. All right. Now, 
This is another method, but not suitable for lab use because of the high pressure and temperature involved. Now, what is the stereochemistry involved electrophilic addition? So the intermediate carbocation ion is actually planar, trigonal planar. So it can be attacked either from the top and the bottom with equal likelihood. Therefore, if a new chiral center is generated, a racemic mixture of enantiomers is expected. So let's look at this. You are supposed to uh, describe the mechanism, okay, and name the type of reaction, undergo, state the conditions, show the movement of electrons, and indicate the formula of the product and any intermediate. So for electrophilic addition, the condition can be just at room temperature. All right. So hex three in, draw the structure first, and then always attack heteroid diffusion from uh the H is bonded, actually equal likelihood like, because they are both like. Same, same, lah, huh? doesn't matter. And then from the top of the plane, the BR can attack and you form something like this. So this H and this one will become, yep. If you attack from the bottom, the H will become receding into the paper and like that. So, why this reaction of either the isomer of H3in with hydrogen bromide give the same equimolar mixture? Because the reply to this is both cis and trans isomers from the same carbocation ion where the carbon with a positively charge is planar. So there will be equal probability of attack of carbocation ion from either side. Therefore, you form a racemic mixture with equal amount of enantiomers. The next reaction is reduction, which is also catalytic hydrogenation. This is not an electrophilic addition reaction, but it is an addition reaction as well as an example of heterogeneous catalyst. Okay, so we can refer to the notes on electron kinetics for more information on what is heterogeneous catalyst. I shall not elaborate here. So there are three methods. Okay, you can either use hydrogen with nickel catalyst at 150 degrees Celsius or hydrogen again, but a different catalyst, platinum or platinum oxide at room temperature, or hydrogen, palladium, and some heating. So this catalytic hydrogenation is a quantitative reaction. We actually measure the volume of hydrogen gas to determine the number of CC bonds in the CC double bond in the alkene. Okay, just for information, good to know. No much elaboration here, that's it. For oxidation reactions, right, we understand that alkenes is actually prone to oxidation. Like edible oils like have many CC double bond, and these oils are exposed to atmospheric oxygen, they will turn rancid quickly. Okay, meaning they will actually uh, break down. So alkenes actually combust with oxygen completely to form carbon dioxide and water. I'm sure you know how to write this, huh? Okay, so um how to get 3M plus 2. Okay, you know this is N and 2N, but because there's H2, so this one is 2N divided by 2 to give you N. You need to divide by 2 to balance the hydrogen atoms number. And then the oxygen will be uh, N because you have 2. Uh, again, you have N divided by 2. You understand? Because you need to divide by two because this N come from this C because O2, O2. But this O, O2, so in order to balance the O, you have to divide by two again. So this N come to here, divide by two. Then you equate them, become uh, 2N plus N. So 2N plus N divided by two will give you 3N over two. So that's how you get the uh, coefficient. All right. But the most important part is this. Okay. Uh, When we have the alkenes reaction with KMnO4, which is an uh, oxidizing agent you are familiar with, in alkaline condition, there is mild oxidation only. 
So only the pi bond is broken. You form a diode. However, using um, acidified potassium manganese and you heat under reflux, huh, that is going to be more extreme, right? There will be strong oxidation where you actually, you know, cleave the double bond totally. And as a result, right, uh, it actually formed a ketone, okay? As well as a, maybe a carboxylic acid and carbon dioxide and water. So it can be all this. All right. <clears throat> so let's go into the detail. Okay. But with potassium dichromate, sorry, no reaction. Okay. So just assume there's no reaction between alkenes. So the K2Cr2O7, so the orange, remains orange. There's no color change. But you will see color change for these two. All right. Now, so what happened during uh, this mild oxidation that a diode is formed? So for example, we have ethene reacts with cold alkaline aqueous KMnO4. So you form ethene one, two diode. Okay, not only you have the purple KMnO4 decolorized, and you also form a brown or black PPT of MnO2. Okay. Uh, you can also use cold acidic potassium manganate, but it's less common and not preferred. Okay. We don't want it to be, because in acid, acid medium, right, the strength of KMnO4 will increase. Uh, so we don't want it to be too extreme. La. You just want to form diode. La. Okay. However, in strong oxidation of hot acidic medium, it's more extreme. Um, you can form either ketone, carboxylic acid, or just carbon dioxide and water. The alkene are first oxidized by the hot acidified potassium manganate to form products such as carbonyl compounds or carboxylic acids. The carbon-carbon double bond is completely ruptured or break down under the strong oxidizing condition. We call it oxidative cleavage. So the products form depend on the type of CC double bond. So how do we know which is which? So just remember this, okay? Uh, now, if it's something like this with two R group, uh, pay attention, uh, we have two R group here, okay? You will form a ketone. If you have only, so you have two, R groups can be methyl or others. One R group you form a carboxylic acid O O H. So this one become O H. Oxidized man. All right. The O added to here. The C O H is carboxylic acid functional group. If you only have H H, no R group. I have to tell you, you just break down completely CO2 and H2O. Okay. Don't say that aldehyde is formed because uh it will be further oxidized under this extreme condition to finally acetyl no aldehyde. Okay. If the question asks for organic product, please don't say CO2 and water because they are not organic, they are inorganic products. So this will happen if the <coughs> terminal CH2. So this will normally be the terminal one, meaning the last carbon, okay? Okay, now, so seeing this carbon is a terminal carbon, right? It will just form CO2 and water, and you just have to balance the equation yourself. And these are the observation. Another observation is the formation of CO2, like, which you have learned before. Okay, so if it's something like this as well, like acid, right, it can also become CO2 and water upon oxidation. Now, butane 1,3-diene, right, is uh, another example. Lah, is what happened to it is that it is first oxidized to HCOH and uh, dicarboxylic acid. So these two carboxylic acid, right, are further oxidized by hot acidified potassium manganate to form CO2 and water, all right? So what happened is that, okay, um, 
This is the original starting reactant, the butane one three diene. Meaning got two two double bond here. One three diene. Okay, one two three one three diene. Not two four. One three. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so this is the terminal. So it will form because got two H here. You just put O and then you have further oxidation. But this is not the end. You will form the carboxylic acid first, but not the end. It will become, it will break down to form CO2 and H2O. Well, of course, you need to add oxygen to it. As for this one, the remaining one here. So this one is here. And this one is here. Okay. So this, no, sorry. Is this one here? Let me separate for you. So cleave is here. Cleave is here. I think they show the cleavage here already. It's CC. So you cleave the double bond. So cleave the double bond. Okay, cleave, cleave, cleave. And you have this. So the one in the middle, uh, O, OH, but you know that this is the terminal carbon, so it will not just remain at ease. Oh. So it will eventually become CO2 and water. It will break down again. All right. CO2, 2C, O2, H2, oh, you need more water. You need more oxygen, I think. Because it's 4, 5, 5. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, extra oxygen here. 1, 2, 3, 4, here got 5. Ma. So it's add another one. Na. Then here is one, there's one, two, ma, so two, so add another O. Oh, the number of H is the same. Here, one, so two O, but three here, right? Another O last. Okay. So this one also becomes COH first before CO, CO, COH, okay. Um, yeah, methanoic acid before it breaks down. So methanoic acid is not the it's an intermediate product only. La. It will further oxidize the CO2 and water eventually. Same for here, the dicarboxylic acid will also be, it called ethane dioic acid will also be further oxidized. Yep. <coughs> so in total, right, you actually uh So total you have one, two, three, but you take note there's actually O here. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So total eleven. Okay. All right. So you need eleven oxygen to form the CO two and water. Total is one, two, three, four, one, two, three. That's the overall equation. Now. So the technique is cut the double bond, cleave the double bond, plug end of the with double bond with oxygen first. So the one that's cut right, you join with oxygen and then change the H attach to double bond to C to OH. So this one change to OH. So you join O and then change the H to OH. Okay, and then you form the CO2 and H2O. Okay, so these are just some more examples. Now, how to do this? Okay, don't look at the answer yet. Just look at the question and try it out yourself. So basically, right, the first step is you have this condition. You will actually um, yeah, break the double bond first and then form the CO. This one is you just ketone because there's two R group here. This one can just, it's not a terminal carbon, right? So just leave it at ease. But if I have this one, right? It will form CO, ketone again. And then this part here will be C double bond OH. C double bond OH. This part is a terminal carbon, becomes CO2 and water. Then you have this one. O, O, but then this will be re, 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 reconfigured to form this. This one will form, yeah, just like that. 
Okay, more examples. Draw the structure of alkene that form the oxidation products. Cut here, becomes C double ketone. Here is O O H. Okay, it's not a terminal carbon, so leave it as it is. Here, cut here. This one is ketone again. The other one would be O O H, and then break down CO two and water. Okay, this one. In this case, there are three oxidation products where one has a two double bonds, C double bond O group. So this means there are two, because if you form like, you know, uh, three products, then definitely will be two CC bond. If two products is two products, one CC double bond, three products, upon oxidation to double bond between carbon. So the fragment with two CO bond must be in the center. So you just redraw this. Yeah, this is the one, this one must run in the center, this one, that's, this is what they mean. So C, A, C, C, there's two C here, so CH3, C, double bond O, okay, correct. And then this one, C, O, H, C, H, 2, C, double bond O, C, H, 3. And then the next one will be, this one come from the, you see this seven, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have one more here. Eh, worry, one, two, three, correct, four, five, six, eh, seven. Oh, because you got, hmm. A, C double bond C. This one and this one is just the different OH. Yeah. So it can be here also, right? Yeah. It's just flipping this molecule, right? Mm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, this is not hmm, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now this one, right? Um, uh, to draw back, you're supposed to draw back. What would it be, right? So there are two possible answer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think this is not correct. Like. It should be one C only. So this one should be a O, right? You join the O. Yes. You break this. Okay, if you refer to this one, right, it's actually this part here is C double bond O, O, H, and H. So double bond O, wait a minute, O, H, and H. Okay. C, O, O, like this one.
一二三四 ，OK。So actually, actually, no need. It's just like this means that no need, no need. Just means that it's not C here. It just link to there. So to form back this, right? Um, hmm. To get what is the shape of this, right? The the actual structural formula of this. So is C double bond C. There's a CH three here. Okay, you join back. You you work backward lah to get the C, and then you. Continue on to form the double bond C. So the two products, right? The two double bond is not near each other. Yeah, opposite end. All right. Or it can be also like this. Or the CH three should be here. So the product with the two C double bond O right must be drawn in the center to show the double bond because there are two carbon carbon double bond here. All right. Now, so we have strong oxidation in hot alkaline medium, right? Then we will form a ketone carboxylic salt with acid to produce OH. And carbonate ion or water, all right. Because it's alkaline, so the it will become CO three two minus, because the H plus react with the alkaline, the CO two react the alkaline to form CO three two minus. So when the medium for the strong oxidation of alkene is changed from acidic to alkaline, some of the products will change. So the carbonate ion is formed instead of carbon dioxide and you form RCOO minus instead, carboxylic salt. But you can convert this to carboxylic acid la, easily by using acid. Now, let's go to the last part on distinguishing tests for the alkenes. So the chemical test to distinguish compound must result in different observable change for the different compounds involved in the reaction. Some examples include color change, formation of PPT, formation of gas, and dissolving of a compound. Uh, just carry out in test tube. Do not use heat under reflux or measure the pressure. There's no need. So in the result, you state reagents and condition, test observations and equations if needed. For example, uh, describe a simple chemical test to distinguish between pentane and pentuene. Uh, you can just state the reagents and conditions as BR2 in CCL4 at room temperature in the dark must mention. Add BR2 in CCL4 to each compound separately. And for the one with pentuene, there will be orange red color decolorized, but it's not so for pentane. There's no color change. Okay, that would be better than the equations if needed. Okay, then for chemical distinguishing test for alkenes, besides using bromine in CCL4, BR2 can also be used. Okay, note that the major product is a bromohydrin, and if the alkene is asymmetrical, the major product is one via the more stable carbocation. If the alkene is a gas, pass through the gas or bubble the gas into aqueous bromine, and the orange aqueous bromine will be decolorized. Now, on warming an alkene with acidified aqueous potassium manganate, the purple solution will decolorize. So if the alkene is a terminal alkene, besides decolorization, there will be effervescence, which form a white PPT because of CO2. So a terminal alkene can be distinguished from alkene, which does not contain terminal CC bond by warming the alkene separately with acidified KMnO4 and passing the gas evolved into aqueous calcium hydroxide. The terminal alkene decolorized KMnO4 and give off a gas that formed white PPT with aqueous calcium hydroxide. The other alkene decolorized KMnO4 but 
did not give off a gas. Okay. Um, to, that is to distinguish terminal carbon 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 double bond. The terminal one will actually form CO2. La. So for each of the test pairs or compound, describe one simple test to distinguish between them. You can use BR2. Da, 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 da. I will just run through this very quickly. It's a repeated point. But pen 1 in, pen 2 in, how cannot use about terminal carbon, right? So you can use KMO4, heat, add two drops of mixture containing KMO4 and dilute acid, and heat, heat, it will decolorize. But pen 1 in will also produce a colorless gas that form white PPT when bubble into iron water, but pen 2 in does not, can really. Because this will form, it will break down to form CO2. Man. Equation, pen 2 in, they will form this uh, carbosity acid here. Yeah, you will form carbosylic acid because it is, yeah, you have two hydrogen, two hydrogen, right? Yeah. Then here will be another carbosylic acid. Oh, this one is this one. This one is the other one. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. O, then the OH, okay? Secondary. This one is terminal. This one will form this one. This part we cut off. So you cleave this part. This one you cleave this part. You must know where to cleave. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. O, then OH. The other one will form CO2 and water. Okay. Um, this one I need to adjust it. Okay. So this is a summary. Lah. You can just read yourself at your own reference. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Any question, feel free to ask me. Thank you.